this episode, we're going to look at adding Bootstrap version 5 Beta 2 into our Ruby on Rails application. One of the highlights about Bootstrap 5 is that it no longer has jQuery as a dependency. Which for some, and even myself, I do like jQuery, but the more dependencies I can remove from my application, I think the more maintainable that will be in the long run. And so, we're just going to create a very basic page where we have a modal, and we can launch this modal, confirming that the styling and the JavaScript is working appropriately. We are going to take a look at this installation in four different ways. We are going to look at it from a Webpacker perspective. So what we need to do with Webpacker in order to get the Bootstrap library installed, but then we'll also look at using the Bootstrap gem, using the provided CDN, then also look at it from a hot wire and a yarn perspective. And it's important to note that each one of these routes have their own advantages, and it's really going to depend on your project which one is going to be the best route. So for the Webpacker way, if you are using Webpacker already in your application, it's very easy to add and to get up and running, especially with Bootstrap 5, where you don't have a lot of the dependencies that you have to worry about like you did with previous versions. But with the addition of Hotwire, I've been starting to think, is Webpacker going to be removed as we currently know it from Rails 7 and future versions? So if you are starting out a new Ruby on Rails application, is this going to be the best route to go? And so for my existing applications that I've already started, that are already using Webpacker, I would likely go ahead and continue down this route. Using the Bootstrap gem, it also is going to be easy to add. It's an official gem that is maintained, but on the downside, you do have an additional gem dependency. And with the Bootstrap gem, you would be relying on the Rails asset pipeline to include in the CSS and the JavaScript. And then with the CDN route, it's extremely easy to add into your application. You are dependent on an external CDN. However, the main drawback on here, and the reason why I probably wouldn't use the CDN in this particular case, is that it's only solving the bootstrap installation problem. It doesn't solve any other issues with any other libraries that I have, so we're not really adding in any kind of framework in place to solve our JavaScript dependencies or anything like that. And then finally, we'll look at the Hotwire and Yarn perspective, where we're going to use the Rails asset pipeline to bring in Bootstrap. It's a one-time setup, and then it's easy to use, and using Yarn will give you that familiar feel that you have with working with external JavaScript libraries like you have over the past few years. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? So be sure to check that out and use the promo code RUBY for free shipping within the United States. And to start off with the Webpacker, I've created a new Rails 6 application with Webpacker, and we can get started with doing a yarn add bootstrap at next. And we'll also need to do a yarn add at popper js forward slash core. And then in our layouts application HTML ERB file, we can add the style sheet underscore pack tag. We'll pass in the attribute media all with a data dash turbo links track and we'll set it to reload. And so we'll load in our style sheets via Webpacker. We'll also still have our JavaScript via Webpacker. And then we'll have some assets via the asset pipeline, which at this point, this would be really optional since we're bringing things in via Webpacker. Then our app, JavaScript, we can create a new folder and we'll call this the style sheets. And within this new folder, we'll create an application.scss. Within here, we can do an at import and then bootstrap. And that's all we have to do for the CSS portion. And then if we come under the packs, under the application.js, we can import everything as bootstrap from bootstrap. We can also import in from the previous directory, the style sheets, and then the application. And so now if we just come to Bootstrap, look at the docs, I'll search for a modal, and I'll just copy the code that will give us a button and the modal. In our welcome controller index, 
I'll just paste that in so we can see if this is working properly, not only for the styling, but also for the JavaScript. And so now starting our Rails application and visiting our localhost port 3000, we can see that we got our styling and if we click on the modal button, it launches the modal. So this confirms to me that both the CSS and the JavaScript are working correctly. And if you want to add this into your application quickly, then you can come to Rubidium to the Bootstrap 5 template. All you have to do is copy this command and then it'll install it for you. You're able to check out the source code to see what's actually going to happen, as well as look at any kind of version changes that's happened between versions. And so rolling back the changes and just running this template, we can see that it's going through adding the libraries and finishing up the installation. And we even get a sample page with that up and running. So if we just start up our Rails application, and if we visit our local host, forward slash bootstrap, forward slash index, then we can see that things are loaded, even the glyphs are working, as well as the models. So if you're using Webpacker, this is going to be the easiest and fastest way to edit into your application. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.